In this example, we will be designing a one-way slab uh, to support a live load of 100 pounds per square foot over a 15 uh, foot span. Uh, we're going to be using a 4 KSI concrete, uh, which we'll uh, decide on, and we have decided on uh, in the preliminary design steps. Um, and we're going to be using a 60 KSI um, steel. Our first step is to decide on the thickness of our slab. And to do this, we're going to use a minimum thickness requirements, which are based on uh, deflection limits from uh, ACI. Um, so we'll use our uh, ACI um, thickness limit, and this is for uh, simply supported beams. And so we'll have L over 20. So our length is 15 feet. We'll need to change this into inches, 12 inches per foot divided by 20 uh, to give us a minimum height of 9 inches. Um, so this came out to be an even number. If it wasn't, we would round up to the nearest inch. Um, so we'll use an, a slab thickness, or H, equal to 9 inches. Uh, we can then move forward and find our loads um, based on our thickness. Um, so we'll start by finding our dead load. So our dead load will be our 9 inches. Uh, divided by um, 12, so 1 foot per 12 inch uh, to get our units to feet and then take this times the density of our concrete 0.15 uh, kips per cubic foot. Um, so we can then find our dead load to be um, 0 0.113 kips per foot squared. So we're going to be working in one foot uh, strip widths. Um, so we can take this number times one foot to get our W uh, dead load to be 0 0.113 kips per foot. And once again, this is because we're uh, working with a one foot um, slab strip width. Uh, so we can do the same thing with our live load. Uh, so we're given our live load of 100 pounds per square foot. Um, so we can change that into kips. So 0.1 kips per square foot. And um, taking this times one foot, our strip width, we can get our uh, distributed live load to be 0 0.1 kips per foot. We can then find our factored load uh, using our load combination for uh, dead and live load. So 1.2 times our dead load, 0.113 kips per foot, plus 1.6 times 0 0.1 kip per foot to give us our factored distributed load of 0 0.3 kips per foot. Uh, we can then use this distributed uh, load to um, find our factored ultimate load. Um, so we'll find our m sub u to be equal to, um, we're simply supported, remember? So we're just going to find uh, wL squared over 8. So our W, 0.3 kips per foot uh, times our L, 15 feet, making sure our units are consistent, and then divided by 8 uh, will give us our MU, which is 8.4 kip feet. And remember, we're working in a one foot strip width, so I'm going to label this per foot to make sure that we remember that we're working in our one foot strip width. Uh, we can take this times 12 to find our uh, factored moment uh, in terms of kip inches. So 101 kip inches uh, per one foot strip width. And then, so this is our, our factored load that we can work with. Um, we can then change this into our MN required, dividing um, our MU uh, by fee. 
and we're going to use a phi of 0.9, um, assuming that we're tension controlled. So we'll take our 101 kip inches per foot divided by 0.9 uh, to give us our MN required, which will be 112.5. Kip inches per foot. And this is the value that we'll use moving forward in our design. Our next step is uh, we need to find uh, our D, um, so some of our other dimensions. Uh, so we can find our D or the, the depth of our longitudinal steel by taking our height minus our cover minus half of our longitudinal bars, which we're going to assume are number five bars. Uh, we could also assume number fours. Uh, generally, our um, slab reinforcement will be four, uh, number fours, number fives, or number sixes. Um, so we can plug in our, our values here. So we had an overall height of nine inches. Uh, the cover requirements for slabs are, is 0.75 inches. And then we have half of our number five bar, which has a diameter of 0.625 inches. So this will give us a D of nine, or sorry, of 7.94 inches. We'll next turn our attention to the main um, reinforcement that is uh, required in our slab. Uh, we'll look at our minimum steel requirements from ACI based on our uh, shrinkage and temp uh, temperature steel. Uh, we'll look at our max steel reinforcement based on uh, tension controlled um, steel requirements. And then we'll look at the uh, actual steel that's required um, based on an approximated um, slab capacity. Uh, so first, um, our minimum steel requirement uh, for temperature and shrinkage steel is 0 .00, uh, rho equal to 0 0.0018. Um, so we can then turn this into an A. Um, S uh, of um, 0 0.0018 um, uh, times our B, which is a 12 inch strip. Um, in our minimum steel requirement, we use H, so our H is 9 inches. And then we can find our AS uh, minimum to be 0 0.19 inches squared per foot. Similarly, we can find our max steel. So first we need to find our road tension controlled. Um, so for us, um, our beta one for our four KSI steel is 0.85. Remember this will change if we uh, have different, uh, different strength concretes. So for four KSI concrete, we're at 0.85 um, and this will decrease as our concrete strength increases. Um, so we'll have 0.85. Uh, times beta 1.85 times 4 KSI concrete divided by 60 KSI steel and then times 3 eighths uh, to get our row tension controlled um, which will be 0 0.018. Uh, so then we can find our AS tension controlled uh, which will be um, 0 0.018 times our base width. Remember, we're working with 12-inch um, strips. And then in this case, uh, we're going to use our D, so 7.94 inches. And we'll find our AS uh, tension controlled to be about 1.7 um, inches squared per foot. Finally, we can find our AS required uh, from our, our uh, demand and from our loading that, that we found earlier. Um, so we can uh, approximate our flexural capacity by taking our uh, force times an approximate lever arm. Uh, remember, this is approximate, so we can't use this uh, when we're um, analyzing our section later. Uh, but we'll take our um, MN required, which we found to be 112.5 kip inches uh, per foot, 
divided by our Fy, which is 60 KSI, times 0 0.9, times 7.94, and we'll find our AS required to be 0 0.26 inches squared per foot. Um, the, the final requirement is our max spacing requirement. Um, so for us, it'll be 18 inches or uh, 3H. Um, so 18 inches will control. Um, this is an ACI check. So we'll remember that our, our S max or our spacing max will be 18 inches moving forward. So we can see that um, our area of steel required needs to be greater than 0.19 less than 1.7 and greater than uh, 0.26 um, inches squared per foot. Um, so we're going to choose our bar size now um, and we're going to choose a, a bar size that's uh, closest um, to our AS required here. Um, so we'll use a number five bar uh, which has an AS of 0 0.31 inches squared. Um, so we'll use this um, in our next step. So we can use uh, the actual area of our bar now um, compared to what's required to find um, our required spacing. Um, so we're just using simple proportions saying that uh, our AS required divided by the um, area of our bar is equal to um, 12 inches or 12 inches, uh, which um, you know our AS required was required within this 12 inch strip. Uh, divide, divided by the um, S required, which would be the actual spacing of our bars. Um, so our S required then is our 12 inches divided by, or, or sorry, times our uh, AS of our bar, which will be 0 0.31 inches squared, and then divided by our AS required, uh, which is uh, 0 0.26 inches squared. Uh, and we'll find then our S required to be 14 inches. Um, so we can see that our S required 14 inches is less than our maximum spacing uh, that's allowed, which is 18 inches. Um, so we can choose our spacing, and I'm going to choose a spacing of 14 inches. Uh, so we're going to move forward with the design, looking at um, number five bars spaced at 14 inches. So we can then determine the steel area um, that we have per strip. So we'll have a steel area of the area of our bar, 0 0.31 uh, square inches, divided by our actual spacing, 14 inches, and times the width of our 12 inch or one foot uh, strip. Uh, so we can find our, our AS here to be um, 0 0.266 uh, um, inches squared. Uh, per foot. So this is the um, area of steel uh, that we're providing um, per strip, uh, per one foot strip, and, and we'll use this value moving forward in our, in our design and analysis. So now uh, we'll move from design to analysis, and we're going to find now find our actual moment capacity for our nine inch slab, uh, which will give us a, uh, have a, a D of 7.94 um, with number five bars spaced at 14 inches, uh, which we found uh, the, the area of steel for um, per uh, 12 inch strip for um, this configuration. Um, so we'll turn to analysis and we'll find first find our beta one. So for four KSI uh, concrete, we'll find our beta one to be 0.85. Um, we can find our C, uh, remember from equilibrium, uh, so our AS, um, 0.266 inches squared per foot times 60 KSI divided by 0.85 times 4 KSI steel, or sorry, 4 KSI concrete times our one foot um, strip width times our beta one, which is 0.85. Uh, so we'll find our C to be 0 0.46 inches. 
um, and then we can find our nominal moment capacity. So we'll have our 0.266 inches squared per foot. 60 KSI is our steel times our D, which is 7.94 minus beta 1. 0.85 times C, 0.46, divided by 2, and we'll find our MN then uh, to be equal to 124 uh, kip inches. And we'll remember this is our, our capacity per foot. We can then check our strain in our steel and find our strain in our steel to be 0 0.003 uh, times D, which is 7.94 inches minus C, 0.46 divided by C, 0.46 inches, um, to find our, the strain in our steel to be 0 0.049. Uh, so this is greater than our tension control limit of 0 0.005, um, so we're okay here. Uh, we can then find our phi MN, uh, which will be 0.9 for tension controlled, uh, times our MN is 124 kip inches per foot. Uh, to give us a phi MN of uh, 112 kip inches per foot. And we can compare this to our M sub U, our demand, uh, which we found to be 101 uh, kip inches per foot. And we can see that our uh, factored capacity is greater than our demand, so we're okay here. Uh, finally, we'll need to find the temperature and shrinkage steel that's required in the in the transverse direction. So uh, previously, we found the longitudinal steel that's required and designed that. And now we'll look at the temperature and shrinkage steel that that will run um, perpendicular to the longitudinal steel. Um, so we have our our uh, AS required, um, and this is an ACI expression um, is uh, 0.0018 times our base width which we're still going to work in a 12 inch um, strip width, and then take it times our H, which is nine inches. Uh, so we can find our required is 0.19 um, inches squared uh, per foot. We can see in this case that our, our 0.19 square inches is really close to our uh, the area of our number four bar. Um, so I'm going to say, that we're going to use um, number four bars um, spaced at uh, 12 inches on center. So this will give us an AS of uh, 0 0.2 square inches, which is the area of our bar. And since we're spacing at 12 inches on center, um, we can, we'll just have the same um, area per strip. So this then gives us our, our final design. Uh, we'll have uh, number five bars spaced at 14 inches as our longitudinal steel. And we're going to place that as our bottom uh, layer of steel. And then running in the transverse direction is our temperature steel, which will be our number four bars uh, spaced at 12 inches. Um, we're, we had 4 KSI concrete, 60 KSI steel, um, and we have our, our uh, slab thickness of 9 inches. Um, and, and here you can see a, a plan view of the, um, the steel layout with our longitudinal and, and uh, uh, temperature and shrinkage steel shown.